Hello guys, so we are now at Oxford Blockchain Conference and here with you Anna Tutova, co-founder of Coins Telegram and our guest from Starkware, Ali Ban uh, Sasson, who is uh, co-inventor of uh, ZK Snarks and is well co-founder of Starkware and uh, Diego Olivia, who is the CEO of Starknet Foundation. Great to have you here both. Great to be here, thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, so uh, uh, we had before interview with Ali uh, Ben Sasson. Uh, you can watch it on our YouTube channel. So he told how he started and etc. Uh, but for those who are not uh, aware yet what Stackware do, can you tell briefly what what the mission of the Stackware and what problems do you solve? Yeah, so we scale Ethereum, we're a layer two uh, uh, over a validity rollup, also known as a ZK rollup. We use a technology called ZK Starks, which is uh, the fastest, most scalable, um, most future-proof um, scaling technology out there, and uh, it's open for developers. And uh, from my side in the Starknet Foundation, uh, we're here to... Uh, uh, generate awareness, education mm -hmm. uh, around Starknet, what you can build, Cairo as a language as well, uh, and also uh, to support developers uh, through that journey, uh, mm -hmm. everything from um, early adopter grants so that they can start playing with the technology, uh, to connecting them with projects, with companies mm -hmm. that are building uh, on Starknet, and also for bigger teams uh, to uh, that are interested in building tooling infrastructure for Starknet. We have developer partnerships uh, mm -hmm. that uh, where we give grants for them to develop uh, uh, this infrastructure and tooling uh, for the rest of our developers for the uh, as public good for the for mm -hmm. the ecosystem. And uh, yeah, also uh, we are here to facilitate governance. So we have mm -hmm. several committees within the community, uh, everything around governance, how we distribute grants, mm -hmm. uh, how the ecosystem should evolve. And, and we're here as a fa this facilitator and connector of members of, of the community, uh, mm -hmm. mainly. And um, you as well uh, made your technology open source and uh, launched uh, Start Prover. So why did you decide to make it open source and what does it mean for the ecosystem? Okay, so just to clarify, uh, not all of the code has been already open sourced. We have committed to it and it will be, as part of the decentralization phase, it will be all of it open sourced. Uh, the reason is very simple. Starknet is a public good, which means it cannot rely on any uh, single point of failure and it cannot be controlled by any one entity. It's very important that, as, it's very important that as a public good, everyone can access it and this goes well with open source code. And uh, you have uh, as well two technologies, two products, uh, StarkX, uh, which is more like uh, SAS uh, permi uh, permission uh, solution, and StarkNet uh, permissionless uh, ZK uh, rollup. And uh, you uh, as well made recently a partnership uh, with uh, Fortify uh, for the institutional launch of uh, the dApps on uh, StarkX. Uh, so can you tell more about this and uh, what type of uh, institutional clients do you have and what's happening in that area? Okay, I'll answer for StarkX and I'll let Diego answer for StarkNet. So StarkX indeed is a SaaS model, a SaaS product uh, we service now in production, seven different entities across NFTs and uh, uh, spot and uh, perpetual trading, teams like Sorer, DYDX, ImmutableX and others. And um, indeed um, we are um, basically offering these services to any exchange, uh, be it NFT or trading or transfers that wants to use it. Um, that's about StarkX. Uh, I'll let uh, Diego answer for StarkNet. I mean, for, for StarkNet, uh, StarkNet is a public good and, and, uh, and open source uh, uh, in principle. So what we're trying to do is invite uh, everything, everything from individual contributors, developers, mm -hmm. to very large teams uh, to build on StarkNet and take advantage mm -hmm. of uh, what StarkNet provides in terms of mm -hmm. uh, uh, scale, speed, security. Uh, so that's what he, you know, we're here to do. So it's very open to anyone to participate from mm -hmm. uh, individual engineers to large institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's, it's a platform approach. And how do you generally see the institutional adoption of crypto, or DeFi, or blockchain? Uh, I mean, I think there are some uh, uh, interesting research, research projects. Mm -hmm. I think uh, at the moment, uh, 
generalizing, but I think it's still early days uh, for what institutions are doing in, 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 in blockchain in general. But I think they do see uh, the potential now, and I think not only research but projects and uh, are are uh, growing, and they're more and more interested and devoting more energy resources. They're taking the technology much more seriously for them. So I think this is going to be moving very quickly, especially now that not only functionality but now the performance is also improving. Mm -hmm. Uh, very significantly, I think mm -hmm. uh, we will see the participation of institutions growing very rapidly, going move more from uh, testing research to actually building meaningful products and services uh, on top of blockchain. And maybe you can uh, name some institutional points if that's public? Well, w one thing that, that is public that is uh, very interesting is uh, and, and the nice thing about being a public good that is not under our control is that we learned of this with everyone else. So Visa, uh, one of their research groups, published a very interesting uh, research and proof of concept that used the, the account abstraction, one of the novel features that uh, was suggested by Vitalik and Ethereum researchers, but first implemented inside the core of a blockchain inside StarkNet. Um, it's called account abstraction, and uh, unbeknownst to us, the Visa team uh, decided to uh, explore it and show how they can do all kinds of very interesting wallets and services for their w users who are n very much not crypto, but just uh, you know, you know, the rest of the world. Uh, so that's one example of a uh, very successful institutional use of uh, of our technology. And now as well, many projects launched the ZK EVMs, like Scroll uh, launched it, Polygon, ZK Sync, uh, and so you invested in the pro ZK EVM project, uh, uh, Kakara. Uh, so can you tell more about this? And will you use it for uh, ZK EVM, or are you developing as well your own solution too? So, um, yeah, there's a, a proliferation of projects that offer developers uh, ways to take their code and deploy it uh, at greater scale and lower cost. Um, I should say, most of the projects out there are going with this thing called ZKEVM, which roughly means um, you don't need to change your Solidity code, you just press a button and it's supposed to automatically work at the very same scale. Um, at Starker, we are not afraid of innovating and we came up with uh, an approach that we strongly believe is much better because what we did is we first of all created a brand new programming language that is at the same time Rust inspired, it's ergonomic, it's safe and it's more ergonomic and safer for programmers um, to, to use than Solidity is. And it's not me saying this. this, these are a lot of core developers who are saying this. For instance, people like uh, Moody Salem, one of the core contributors to the Uniswap project, who is now, he publicly announced just last week that he is, uh, in the beginning of June, that he is um, um, starting working only on StarkNet. So, and, and he speaks very highly of the attributes of the Cairo programming language. So what we're seeing is that um, developers are actually hungry for better programming languages, ones that are safer, more ergonomic, and Cairo is the very first and leading one in this way. So there are projects even over Cairo, like Kakarot, that are going to allow developers to take Solidity code and deploy it. Uh, however, however, I personally think the developers should, especially the curious and the good ones, should also explore Cairo on its own sake and see if they like what they see. I think they will. And uh, as well, uh, I remember during Korea Blockchain Week, uh, you made a presentation and mentioned as well that you are developing uh, like Layer 3 solution. So can you explain what is Layer 3 for you? and? Uh, developments with that. Um, so, okay, layer three uses this notion of uh, recursive proving, and recursive proving is something that we're already been using for roughly a year in production. It is. It means that you can prove that something else happened correctly, and that something else can be itself a proof of something else that then happened. So, what you can have, you can have this sort of onion. Um, that has uh, at the very bottom, at the very core, you have Ethereum with this security. And once you have this security and you send a Stark proof to it, you have the very same security also for this thing, which is a layer two. Mm -hmm. But if the, then if the layer two receives information about some other thing that is off of the layer two, 
it can verify its correctness, and then that is verified again by Ethereum, which leads to this notion of a layer three and a layer four and so on and so forth. So you can, I mean, what does it mean to developers? Developers will be able to be running their own dedicated servers, let's say for a particular game or for a particular trading engine, and um, have the full security of Ethereum backing them while they have full control over the execution of these proofs. So you have like a version of Ethereum that is totally under your control as an operator and has much lower cost, but it has all the good security properties of decentralized Ethereum. That's what layer threes give you. Uh, recently, as well, uh, the association in Switzerland uh, launched uh, uh, ZK rollups on Bitcoin uh, using Cairo language and uh, Stackware. So, what's your opinion about ZK rollups on Bitcoin? Well, uh, that secret, I mean, in general, we think. Uh, uh, we're strong believers in innovation and open source software, and and the fact that others think that uh, you know Cairo and uh, it's a great language uh, to build on and on top of, and also that CK rollups are a, a good way to build things uh, for scale and security and so forth. Then I think it's a, it's a very good thing. The more people use this, the more we will be able to improve it. And it, again, it's just I think. Uh, confirmation that we're on the path of something very interesting. So I think, again, the whole point of, I think, our, our space of blockchain is around open source, about putting more and more brains together, about mm -hmm. assessing, uh, challenging whatever all of us build together. So the more something you build is used, the better it will become. So I think it's a, it's a very positive thing, not only for us, but I think for, for the broader ecosystem. Ali, do you have anything to add? Well, I, 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 on this matter, I, I completely agree. I mean, yeah, we're supportive. I would say it's inevitable in our view that um, Starks are going to be the future-proof base technology used by everyone and that Cairo is going to be the next language that smart contracts are written in. I have no doubt about that. So now it means that it will be adopted everywhere. For instance, you know, Tezos has announced already exploring putting um, um, a Cairo verifier on it. Um, there are multiple other teams looking at this, and of course the Barknet and the uh, Bitcoin attempts are others. And generally we're supportive of it. At the same time, we can only focus on one thing at a time. And that one thing for us is uh, public Starknet, which is getting a lot of traction and needs our, our full attention. And Bezos is well making the uh, research that they don't see the uh, future for the validity rollups, uh, for ZK rollups in the next few years because there are many challenges uh, with the scalability and as well the computational costs uh, are quite high and so that is why they are uh, developing their smart rollups. So what's your opinion on that? Uh, which rollups are they developing? Uh, smart uh, smart rollups. Smart rollups? Yeah, smart I, I have no doubt, and I'm willing to put a bet against anyone that in three years it will all be um, StarkNet. I have no doubt, yeah. It's already the case that we, I mean, the Stark-based uh, technology is offering, well, first of all, it's the only one that really offers Ethereum security, right? Uh, many of the optimistic rollups don't really have their core security turned on even, right? So if you, you know, that's, that's one thing than one can say about that. And then the other is that we're already processing more scale than the optimistic roll-ups today. So, and this will only increase dramatically in, for instance, in our upcoming version um, and further on. So yeah, whoever is saying that is, uh, you know, not in touch with the reality that we see. And how do you see the enterprise adoption of uh, blockchain? Do you have any enterprise uh, clients uh, uh, which use already your ZK rollups or plan to use in the future? I'll say no comment. Okay. <laughs> and uh, can you share the most exciting projects uh, in your ecosystem? Uh, well, I, I think we have uh, many that are exciting. One of them that I'm very excited about is Dojo, that is building a very interesting, a powerful platform for uh, gaming. Uh, I think that's going to really change uh, how gaming is going to build. It's going to really improve a lot of things for the, all the gaming companies that are going to build on StarkNet. So that one uh, I'm very bullish, bullish on. Uh, I don't know if you have any other projects.
And can you share as well some upcoming plans uh, for this aqua? Uh, well, upcoming plans, uh, well, for the foundation, uh, we obviously uh, are ramping up our efforts, so a lot of things that we're going to be doing is uh, growing our team to better serve the community. That's one thing that is very important uh, to me personally, of course. And other things that we're just very, very excited about is just the roadmap. So we have uh, an upgrade coming uh, that will improve our performance significantly, uh, and then uh, Later in the year, we also have a uh, volition that's coming up as well that will improve the costs as well significantly. Then we have a fee market that was also going to improve things. And also the roadmap is now also public. So we, we're, that's another effort we're improving uh, well every day in terms of being more transparent, uh, using the community and to, with their feedback and improving that uh, roadmap as well. Uh, but, also, but those three things that I just mentioned, I think are going to be uh, like significant step changes for what mm -hmm. Startnet is uh, capable of doing. But I think why I mentioned the rest is because I think what I'm also very excited about is sort of the framework on which we're building, which is really community-based and it's uh, a, a big strong effort in terms of decentralization and, and making sure that the foundation becomes that, that place that uh, becomes the, 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 the microphone and, uh, of the community and where we are the connectors of all the brains in the community to, to make better decisions as an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So very excited about that. And you mentioned that as well you have upcoming news uh, on the, the increase of your TPS. Uh, can you tell more about this, Felix? Yeah, so the very next uh, upgrade to the StarkNet uh, core infrastructure, which goes under the name of, uh, well, the I'll just wait for the ambulances to pass by. Um, so the very next uh, upgrade, version 12, is also has been called by the community. This is a name chosen by the Starknet community, uh, more TPS daddy, and this symbol. So that's the next uh, version. We're very excited about it. It will be the first layer two that will display in production three-digit TPS for transfers. Very, very excited about it, and likely it will be three digits with a significant number of three-digit transactions. And um, right after that, we have Volition, which will dramatically reduce by at least a factor 10x, probably more, the cost of uh, data for users. Uh, and the, the next thing after that is a fee mechanism for dealing with congestion, because we're pretty sure already we're seeing a lot of congestion and demand for StarkNet. And even as we uh, open up more bottlenecks, we're confident that we'll see even more demand for it. So we need a fee market to... Uh, to allow you know, users to prioritize their transactions. So those are the very close uh, upcoming upgrades we're excited about. Yeah, that's great. Hope to see more projects uh, shifting to the uh, StarkNet ecosystem. And as well, can you give some comments about the public launch of your token? Uh, are you waiting for the better times with the market? Because uh, it's all, uh, you already allocated more than 50% uh, for the DAO voting. Uh, but still the token is not public, so are there uh, any nearest plans to uh, launch uh, trading on the exchanges? Well, on that, uh, we're working on that and uh, it will be coming soon, but no comment further than that for now. Okay, uh, can you share maybe some other recent updates on news uh, from the stockware? Anything you would like to add? Just that uh, it's a, uh, uh, well, uh, Repeating this message that uh, we're welcoming the developers, especially the early adopters, the smart ones. There's both funding from the foundation. There's, uh, you know, to quote, for instance, uh, Itamar Le Suisse, the CEO of Argent, who said that the feeling on StarkNet ecosystem today is like the early days of Ethereum, right? A lot of very smart people working in this sense of excitement that this is going to be the next wave of innovation. So just an invitation to people to join the Discord uh, uh, server and from there meet the community. And we'll, we'll share the, like, a link to the Discord server. Okay. It's the very first place to go and see what's going on. Thanks, okay. Anna. Thank you for sharing your updates and news with thank us. You. And uh, hope to see more great projects in your ecosystem. Well, thank you.